Icebergs. Yes, icebergs. Nothing says science fiction and fantasy like a nice iceberg. You know, the big floating thing that ended so-called king of the world, Leonardo DiCaprio's reign a little bit early. I'm the king of the world! <laughs> yeah, icebergs. And I'm going to tell you in this video today why science fiction and fantasy needs a good iceberg. I'm Steven, your favorite quadriplegic booktuber, and thank you for choosing Phantology. Please like and sub and do all those good things. Follow us at Phantology underscore books and hop on our Discord and let us know what you think of the iceberg video. So you've probably seen this meme going around the internet a little bit. It has eight different tiers from the clear blue sky to the dark depths of the ocean. And in this video, we are going to put science fiction authors and series in their appropriate place on the iceberg. The idea here is that we're going from something that is the most pervasive in society at the top to something that is a little bit more of a deep cut or uncommon at the bottom. So if you were meeting someone for the first time and they said they liked to read, you would assume that they've read the things at the top and then slowly fill them out more and more and determine how much of a fantasy fan they actually were. This is a completely hypothetical and perhaps fake situation that I certainly have not been in like in the past year. When was the last time that I met someone new? But I suppose people meet new people and they had these conversations. Great. Good job, you people. Credit to Shauna Lawless at Shauna L. Wrights and Benjamin at Literature and Lo-Fi for their responses to the iceberg query that we put out on Twitter and Discord. Their responses were part of a crowdsourced operation that I put together into the final and conclusive ultimate iceberg of science fiction and fantasy. Now, before we start, one important note that I need to bring up is this is not gatekeeping. I don't want people to think that the things at the bottom are worse than the things at the top, or you can only read the things at the bottom if you've read all the other things at the top, or any like negative things. I hope people take this as like a TBR list, like add all of these things, everything on the iceberg is great. The idea here is just the top things are more popular and more like ingrained in society. And can we break down what it is to be like a really true fantasy nerd? Like how, how much into the genre are you? And you'll see how far I am because I'm not at the bottom of the iceberg, like not even close. And obviously we won't be able to get to every science fiction and fantasy author out there because there are a lot of them. That would make for a very boring video. So instead, I've condensed all of the crowdsourced opinions and listings that I've got into digestible lists. And so I hope you take these lists as like averages on each section. And there are a lot of books like the ones that I mentioned that go in each area. Okay, the top of the iceberg. Before we even get to the iceberg, actually, this is the sky portion. These are people, if you ask them if they like reading, they say yes, but you don't even ask them about fantasy. What science fiction books and fantasy books can we assume they've read? Well, I have five here. Harry Potter, Hunger Games, Aragon, Percy Jackson, and Twilight. A lot of these skew more to the YA side, obviously, and they've had adaptations made. And I think having adaptations made and also being young, young adults is huge for this section. These are books that probably most people have read because a lot of people read more when they were kids and a lot of people were sucked into things when they saw adaptations made. These listings are averaging for things like age, general exposure because people run into book series kind of randomly, and preference, things that I like or not, things that you're going to like. My likes are probably higher up the list than most others because I made the list, so that's what you get. If you're a bit older than me or younger than me, I probably am a little bit askew with how you would place things on the iceberg. So let me know what I missed or what preferences you have in the comments below. Okay, second section. These are people who if you ask them if they like to read, they say yes, and then you ask them if they like fantasy, they also say yes, and this is the part of the iceberg that is showing above the top of the water. This area includes Lord of the Rings, The Chronicles of Narnia, His Dark Materials, A Song of Ice and Fire, Dune, Orson Scott Card's various works, Stephen King's many, many books, things like YA books like Artemis Fowl or Ready Player One. So there's a pretty good listing there of newer stuff to older stuff, YA stuff, classics, etc. And I think this kind of accurately represents what you get from someone who's read fantasy. These are pretty name brand things. A lot of them have had adaptations made and are fairly well known. You see them. When the iceberg is approaching, you see these things. Okay, section number three. These people really like fantasy. 
we're lurking just below the surface of the water here. So a lot of people, the casual people, are not going to be familiar with a lot of these things, even though us fantasy nerds are going to know them very well. I'm going to start listing off authors, and I'll probably just say one or two of their works for time purposes. So section three includes Brandon Sanderson's Cosmere books, The Wheel of Time by Robert Jordan, Name of the Wind and King Kingkiller Chronicles by Patrick Rothfuss, Outlander by Diana Gabaldon, Terry Pratchett's Discworld books, Raymond Feist's works, including Rift War, Ursula Le Guin's Earthsea and other books, Neil Gaiman's American Gods and a lot of other books that he writes, The Dragon Riders of Pern by Anne McCaffrey, Dragon Lance books by Weiss and Hickman, Terry Brooks' Shannara books, and Douglas Adams' Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy series. So you probably know at least most of these series if you're a serious fantasy fan, and have probably read most of them. So that's why these go to people who really like fantasy, but uh, you know, we're still kind of towards the surface of fantasy. There's a lot more if we scratch a little bit deeper. Now, as I get a little bit deeper, you'll probably notice that there's more fantasy than science fiction. That's really just kind of my preference. I'm more of a fantasy side than science fiction fan. Okay, area number four. This is solidly below the surface. This is the danger area of the iceberg, I suppose. I've never, never captained a ship into an iceberg, but I imagine this would be a bad place to hit. Okay, these are people who really, really like fantasy, two reallys, and they include things like Joe Abercrombie's first law books, Jim Butcher's Dresden Files and Codex Alira, Robin Hobbs' Realm of the Elderling books, the Red Rising series by Pierce Brown, Scott Lynch, Gentleman Bastards, Guy Gavril Kay's Tigana and various other books that he's written, N.K. Jemisin's Broken Earth and other series, Brent Weeks' Lightbringer and Night Angel, Tad Williams' Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn, and he's written some other things, and Andres Saposky's The Witcher series. So again, you've probably heard of these. I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you are someone who's at least at this level or has at least heard of a lot of these authors. If you haven't read any of these, definitely read them. Actually, every author that I name, definitely look them up and read them. These are some that I still think are towards the most popular, the most pervasive fantasy authors out there today. Okay, so at the beginning of the video, I told you I'd tell you where I fit. I think I fit somewhere in this next realm, which is zone number five. These are the people who really, 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 three reallys, like fantasy books. And again, we are solidly into the iceberg here. So these include Cassandra Clare's Mortal Instruments books, the Malazan series by Steven Erickson and Esselmont, Mark Lawrence's Broken Empire and other series, John Gwynn's Faithful the Fallen and Of Blood and Bone, Susanna Clark's including Jonathan Strange and Mr. Norrell, Leigh Bardugas' Grishaverse, the Powder Mage trilogies, there are two of them, by Brian McClellan, James Eilington's Lycanius trilogy, R.F. Kwong's The Poppy War trilogy, Evan Winter's The Burning books, including Rage of Dragons, which is the first one, The Expanse books, you've probably seen the adaptation, by James S.A. Corey, which is actually a pen name for two authors, Ty Frank and Daniel Abraham, The Three Body, Problem Trilogy, Terry Goodkind's Sword of Truth, Peter Brett's Demon Cycle, The Murderbot Books by Martha Wells, and Michael J. Sullivan's Ryria Books. Okay, there is a lot there in Section 5. I think that's like the real meat of where a lot of people kind of get to, because there's just so much and it takes a long time to read all of these. Not saying you shouldn't quest any further down, but personally that's about where I am. I haven't gotten too much into Zone 6, 7, or 8 yet. So zone 5 is fantastic. I can personally vouch for it. Okay, so zone 6. These are people who really, 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 for reallys, like science fiction and fantasy books. These include things like Robert Jackson Bennett's Foundry Side and City of Stairs, Adrian Tchaikovsky's Children of Time and Shadows of the App series, David, Ed David Eddings, Belgariad, KJ Parker, who's written a variety of things, including Sharps, Daniel Abraham, who is half of the Expanse team, but also writes other things like The Long Price Quartet, The Black Company by Glenn Cook, Rune Lords by David Farland, Salvatore, who writes the Drift Drist books, Sarah J. Mass, who writes the Throne of Glass series, The Books of Babel by Josiah Bancroft, Will White's Cradle and other lit RPG series, Fonda Lee's Green Bone Saga, The Silmarillion makes it onto Tier 6, 
the Foundation series, similar, by Isaac Asimov, and John Scalzi's Old Man's War, and Richards. So I've only read a few things here, I'll be honest. I've heard of most of these, though, and I want to get to them. This makes up a lot of the TBR that I personally plan in the next year or two. We'll see how fast I can read. Okay, tier seven. These are five reallys. Really, 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 really. Like Fantasy Book, Kings of the Wild by Nicholas Eames, Emma Wang's Sword of Kaigen, Samantha Shannon's Priory of the Orange Tree, V. Schwab's Darker Shade of Magic, Ben Aronovich, Rivers of London, Pendragon, a personal favorite from my childhood, by DJ McHale, The Axe of Cain by Matthew Stover, Anna Spark Smith's The Empires of Dust, Devin Madsen, We Ride the Storm series, RJ Barker, Wounded Kingdom, Robert V.S. Reddick, writes Master Assassins and other books, Neil Stevenson, Seven Eves and others, Saba Tahir, Ember in the Ashes series, and Dan Simmons, who writes the Hyperion Cantos. I've only read, ah, uh, well, if you count Pendragon, I've, I've not read many of these. If, I guess I threw Pendragon in there, maybe just to give me something in tier seven. So let me know what I missed and how I did here in tier seven. A lot of these authors are more up and coming, and I think we could very well see these tiers shake up in coming years as authors become more established and their series become more well known. Okay. We made it to the very bottom of the iceberg. These are people who really, 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 really like science fiction and fantasy. And I suppose if you're this low on the diagram, you could just make it under the iceberg safely. So definitely check out this tier if you want to be safe from icebergs. Anyway, this includes things like Octavia Butler's Exogenesis series, Gene Wolfe's Book of the New Sun, Jack Vance, Dying Earth, Piers Anthony's Xanth series, Mary Robinette's, who does a lot of different Hugo winning novelettes, including the original that she just did with Brandon Sanderson, Jin Yang, who popularized the wuxia genre of Chinese novels, and I believe is the best-selling Chinese author ever, Bjorn Larson, who writes the Storytellers and Children books, Ben Galley, The Heart of the Stone, Alex Harrow, The Once and Future Witches, and Rebecca Roanhorse, The Black Sun, or just Black Sun. So there are obviously a lot of authors that could have gone, I think, in tiers seven or eight, and I'm just trying to be representative. So let me know which ones you think maybe should have taken more priority than the ones that I listed off, because honestly, I would like to know for my own personal TBR. There's a lot here that I want to read. And after doing this, this was a really productive thing for me because now I can fill up my TBR with a lot of good recommendations. Thanks for watching. Hopefully this was as educational for you as it was for me in forming this video, or at least a little bit entertaining. Let me know what I missed, what should have been in different places in the iceberg. You can do that in the comments below or hop on our Discord and you can find myself and the other four members of Phantology along with a small community of dedicated fantasy book fans that definitely at least make it to tier four. I don't know how many tier eighters we have it though. Do the thing, like, and sub, and you can find all of our podcasts where we cover books in more depth on all of your podcast providers. And look out for our next video, which will be doing the same thing, building an iceberg from the perspective of a Sanderson Cosmere fan. So from top level of big swords and giant crabs to bottom level of spirit webs, and the spiritual realm, where do Sanderson fans line up in your knowledge of the Cosmere? See you then. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Phantology. If you'd like to let us know your opinions on all things sci-fi and fantasy, join our Discord. Invites are in the episode descriptions below. If you'd like to support the show, like these fine folks here, you can do that at patreon.com slash phantology underscore books. Patrons get early access to new episodes, exclusive postings, and exclusive Discord benefits. But of course, just listening and watching and sharing with your friends and family is support enough. Journey before destination all, 